In this video, we're going to talk about creating an axonometric cutout section in Blender. This is a two part series. So in the first part, we're going to sketch and use it as a reference in Blender. And then we're going to model our base. And in the second part, we'll add some more details and then do our render for the axon section. I will be posting the files on Patreon, which I've recently created. So make sure you check it out. Link is below. Hi, my name is Demeter and my hair is different in every single video that I do. The idea is that we have a path in the middle and there's water on either side of it that kind of drops down and this path continues on and there's a waterfall that happens in between. So once I have a thumbnail sketch done, I'd like to do another sketch in a program like Quitter. And the reason for that being is figuring out an idea while sketching is much quicker than figuring out that same idea in 3D. So whenever I can, I sketch, sketch, sketch. That's the best tip I can give to anybody starting out. Just work on sketching as much as you can because it really helps out for anything, including 3D. So the idea behind the sketch of the project is to have a grand entrance, a path with water on either side of it. And once you cross inside, you see this beautiful waterfall. For regular users, they just continue straight past the waterfall on either side and go into a secure area where they can access their vertical circulation or get into other parts of the building. And if you're a visitor, you can get inside and you look down and you see the reception area at the lower ground level. You can take the steps or the escalators to get down and check in if it's a hotel or get to the right place or get access to the right place of the building. And there's also some waiting area where you can experience the hotel and all the other nice features of the place. So here I'm adding a little bit more detail about the areas of reception, which as you'll see later, when I do the 3D, I do decide to do a slightly different version of that. For the facade, I wanted arches, but really tall and impressive arches. And then the building envelope angles down for the upper levels. Inside of this reception space, we have these beautiful arcs with arches on the back side of the reception wall, including where the waterfall is located. And then there's support structure on both the facade and the back side of the reception area, carried by these tall and long arches that sort of help formulate the space. So then we have some planters at the lower ground level with some trees planted inside of it where people can wait and kind of appreciate the grandeur of the space. So next I'm thinking a little bit more about the section cut line and then lastly just adding a little bit more detail and refining some areas by retracing them with a thicker pen. To help understand the materiality better, I just had a few, few simple colors. So gray for walking surfaces and then blue for the water. So once I shaded the facade, it actually helped a lot because I understood with the view that I have set up at the moment, which is an axon view, the facade will block out too much of what I want to show. So I decided to have a cutout line. So it cuts out more on the top than it does on the bottom. So we have another set of arches at the top of the reception area in the facade and then it transitions up to a more rectilinear facade on top. And we probably want to show a little bit of what's happening behind the reception area and also on top of the reception area so it feels like one building. So next we want to put our reference image now, our sketch, back into Blender. So we do that by subdividing our interface and putting it just out there in the outliner. I wouldn't really use this as a reference but I sort of have an feel of how I want this space to feel now. So we start modeling. The first thing we start modeling with is our path. We start with a plane, with a 2x2 plane, make that a little bit larger, add the mirror modifier and start drawing it and sketching it and extending it out to one side. And since everything is mirrored, whatever we do on one side, it will also look the same on the other side. Next, we start adding the water. We start with the outside and then we have sort of waterfalls that drop down to the lower level, model the middle, and we continue refining everything and adding and moving things around least so we get the variation that we want. Absolute piece of cake. Out at the lower level, there is a bridge from one side to the other side. And once the water and the lower ground level is done then we can start making the facade arches as always i start with a plane and then extrude the plane up and create an arches with the spin tool once we're happy with the geometry of the arch then we'll do the same for sort of the column areas so the interior of the arch is the glazing and then we have the colonnade or in this case the structural supports i tweak the structure a little bit so we have a nice available item which we can then, of course, array. I was playing a little bit with the modifiers, not sure whether I can mirror things the way I want on both sides and use the array, but in the end it didn't work out, so I just moved the whole array on one side and then arrayed it and made sure that the middle aligned exactly to the path the way that I wanted it to align. And from then on, the next step was starting to think about the top of our reception area and how that transitions to the rest of the building. I knew from the initial sketch that I wanted 
our facade to step back a little bit. So the reception is a little bit larger than the building on top. And then that transition is softened with the bevel modifier. Then we create another arch. Why an arch? Well, why not? In this case, I used the spin tool again to create the second arch. It was a little bit tricky to figure out how to align that arch on that custom base. But in the end, it worked out pretty well. Actually, it was easier than I thought it would be. Then we have the arch, then it's extruded once again inwards. So we have that depth profile between our cut elements and non-cut elements. As for the facade that's sitting on top, then we have the vertical elements that carry themselves all the way up the building. And then everything is a little bit more rectilinear. We keep the arches to our reception area. You can kind of tell that's the entrance because it's grander and the proportions are much taller than in the rest of the building. So again, now there was a numerous amount of tweaks to figure out what the depth that I wanted was, how that works with the arches that are in the back. And lastly, and how we connect the front to the back. Or in this case, as you can see, I started from the back and connecting it to the front. At first, I thought we can do a straight line that's beveled in, which seems to work fine for the regular ceiling, but I wasn't happy with the way that the columns looked in that case. So the idea when I was doing this, I realized that I would have to have two different modeling strategies, one for the ceiling and then one for the beams that reach out from one side to the other side of the reception area. And those are load bearing. So they had to be quite chunky, but at the same time, beautifully sculptured. So I realized I'll probably have to do a bit of subdiff modeling, which is fine. And that required to separate the areas between the ceiling and then the structural element. With the actual ceiling, I used a lot of bevels to get the curvature where I wanted the way I wanted it. We'll get to the columns in a little bit. Now, we're continuing with the tweaks everywhere to make this a little bit more refined, a little bit better. At this time, I'm realizing this is gonna take me at least three times longer than I thought it was initially going to take me. That's usually still 10 years later as a professional architect, my professional estimation. Anyways, lots of looking around, lots of thinking, lots of tweaking to get to the right place. And then we realized that it's time to put on some floors and thinking about the shape how it can look outside of this whole box, our reception area. Now it's time for another cheeky little sketch, this time directly in Blender with the annotation tool, when I realized that the reception area probably would take a little bit too much time at this point to integrate properly into the facade of the arches of the back wall of the reception. So I decided to pull them out and then think about what's open within the arches and where we can put our lovely planters and our lovely trees which will probably be palm trees of some sort, something quite nice though and generous. And then a sketch for our lovely load-bearing arches that stretch from the front to the back of the facade and carry some columns that would inevitably have to sit on top of this massive reception. So here we start pretty much from the beginning with the arches. I'm just isolating the arches and the arrays kept as this intact from the facade and then just thinking and lingering and realizing, okay, it's really not gonna work with bevels. So it's time to just create the edges that we wanna keep connect those and turn on the subdiv modifier. So finally, something that looks more refined in the way that I was picturing this space to be. And then we do a simple extrusion. The top of the beams doesn't need to be as thick as the bottom of the beams because the bottom is carrying more weight. But we can use that to our advantage. We can make this a little bit more sculptural by having those elements sort of extend and add also a little bit of depth. So they kind of protrude beyond the facade of this. Retrospectively, now that I'm thinking about this, it will probably be a bit too difficult to break that barrier of the facade between the interior and the exterior so the column would stop short of the facade but we can have a beautiful sculptural element that sort of hints at picking up that weight from the front and then we continue to refine this but this time much more simply so with subdiv to get something that looks quite nice and slightly different than the rest of the ceiling. At this point, I'm pretty happy with the arches. I think they're probably the most cultural element in the whole composition. So that's why they require a little bit more thinking and time to get them to look right and something that kind of really pleases the eye. It works well with the large space that we've created. Now this area didn't really resolve itself too well yet in regards to the facade and where it stops. So currently there's just a small gap for the water to be able to flow from the front into the pool. So again, thinking about this retrospectively, there could probably be two separate pools, one that stays outside and one that's inside with a solid division between them. And then there's a small part of the interior pool and that turns into the waterfall that falls down. Carrying on, now it's time to build the edge around our elevated path. 
that goes all the way up. So we just select all the edges and extrude them down half a meter and change the material. So we have a separate material that we can modify later once we're happy with it. And then we build the balustrade and attach different material to that element as well. Next, it's time to close out some of the gaps. And now it's time to start some new modeling fun. These are very simple boxes and that's going to be our reception area. So the first thing to do is to draw out the countertops. So 600 mil by 600 mil and then extrude it and with beveled edges, we elevate those one meter or 900 mil. Then we shift these 1.2 meters or whatever looks good in this case. I wasn't actually that precise to create the ceiling for the pavilion area, for the reception area. So it's a freestanding element and then we duplicate it on the other side. Or rather, we create a mirror modifier and just need to model one of the sides. We repeat now the same process for a planter. So we start with a simple plane that I made a little bit larger, I think three by three meters, bevel the edges, extrude. So that's where people will be sitting. And I thought with this element, we could add a bit more bevel. And there's a slight struggle, and this is always a struggle for me. In Blender is the insets or the offsets when we have beveled edges and how much the, the corners sort of intersect with each other. I don't think there's a good solution yet. If you do know one, please let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to hear it. Because the space is much larger than I thought initially, it's become a very grand space. Uh, let's add two planters instead of one on either side. So four planters all together. Next, we have this bridge in the middle. So that height difference is four meters. So I thought we might make it a little bit more bridge likely by moving it slightly up where needed. Now we also need a edge for the water underneath and a little bit of depth for the bridge. And the last point is our stairs. So I do have a stair tutorial, I believe, and I can do an updated one. If there's interest in it, please let me know in the comments. So I raise our sketch stairs, create one step, add a little bit of depth to the step, and then create an array modifier to get the steps moving up and down. And the important thing is to use constant offsets for the array modifier. So in this case, I'm using 200 mil by 180 mil so we can control our edge a little bit better where we have our balustrade and that's a simple extrusion with the front and the back sort of aligned with each step and then we extrude another element on top of that which is our glass balustrade then i move i inset the, the other side of the step slightly and duplicate the balustrade the edge onto the other side so i have them on both sides then because i wanted to make this proper i'm an architect right so i have to think like an architect and it's important to even do due diligence in simple drawings in simple representations as this now typically in commercial spaces like the one we're portraying here we would have 12 steps before we require a landing so i applied the modifier and duplicated the whole set of stairs moved them down and extended that top stair from the bottom set to create our landing so we have 12 steps on top and 12 steps on the bottom thanks very much for watching this first video and stay tuned for the second video coming up shortly and if you're interested to support this channel and get access to the files, they're available on Patreon. See you.